It's a disease that comes on out of the blue. The nervous system starts to break down. The way it breaks down is by pulling the nerve fibers or the wires that wire us together away from the muscles. And so what happens when your muscles aren't connected? Same thing that happens when the light bulb isn't connected to the wire anymore. It stops working. My left doesn't look anything like his, does it? We just get it up the best way we can. This is Carrie Good's exercise routine, an effort to stem a tide that has turned against him. Booting us into the second period. His end over end kick will come down to Good at the one. Across the 10, the 15, speed, and he's gone. A gifted and humble running back. Goodbye, Kerry Good. Kerry Good was the pride of Town Creek, Alabama. He and all four of his brothers played for the University of Alabama. Kerry would go on to play and coach in the NFL for 11 years. It's hard to imagine being in this position, even harder to be here and can't get out of it. Started out with breathing issues. There were chronic sinus infections, weakness, cramps, weight loss. Carrie's wife, Tanja, saw the change in her husband one day through the kitchen window. I saw him in the yard cutting grass and I noticed that his entire posture was different. After a string of doctor's visits, they were led to the devastating reason for the changes, ALS. He really doesn't have an appetite. He just eats because he knows he needs to. A larger than life existence shrank. Getting dressed on his own is a two hour affair. <sighs> A brief walk. We make it. Exhausting. He needs help to breathe. I lost almost 60 pounds initially. You know, I go from 230 pounds, got to play football. At one point, I could bench 400 pounds, squatted over 800. Now I can't pick up a glass of water. Do you have any more tests this week? Not that I know of. Okay. Will is our only child. He turned 14 in February. Do you need more OJ? He was about eight years old when I was diagnosed. Becky Kidd has had ALS for five years. Dr. Glass diagnosed her. I saw him on January 2nd, 2012, and, and he diagnosed me within about 15 minutes. You know, when I hit the five-year mark, it just hit me like a ton of bricks that, oh my God, 80% of the people who were diagnosed around the time I was are gone. Her struggle is intensifying. I find myself just being jealous as I watch people walk around. And about a year or so ago, it really started impacting my hands and my arms. Man, when your hands start to go, you know, you can't pour a cup of coffee when you can't even fold laundry anymore. It's really disconcerting. So it'll be fun. It's it impacts way. everything, your relationship with your child, your relationship with your husband. You know, I never thought I'd ask my husband to help me pull up my pants. What the hell? We need to give you your next dose of medicine. Okay. Becky will spend the week at Emory Hospital. I'm here at Emory for about four nights. Taking part in a drug trial. They are real leaders in the area of research. I've been so impressed with how they balance their passion for research and science with their passion for caring. Deep breath in. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Dr. Jonathan Glass created the Emory Brain Health ALS Center 20 years ago. All right, I'll go see him. The clinic is set up as a multidisciplinary clinic. This is a patient and family centered clinic. Uh, I can do that. <laughs> Can't really do that. The center treats 550 patients. His team includes respiratory, physical, speech, and occupational therapists, nurses, doctors, social workers, surgeons, and volunteers. In one room, each patient will have every concern addressed in a single visit. Are you falling down? Oh, yeah. Relentlessly progressive, most people with ALS will die within three years. We have two kids, seven and five. I think it's really the model for how patients should be taken care of with chronic diseases, whether it be ALS or anything else. It's where clinical care and research intersect. The clinic and its staff, the embodiment of hope. Let's be positive about it, okay? We'll try anything. We'll try anything.
can I do something to actually slow this disease down? That's what I do in the lab. That's what I do in my science. That's what I'm passionate about. Dr. Glass's aggressive, cutting-edge research is part of a global, collaborative effort to cure ALS. We're starting to develop uh, new information and, and new insights into what kind of things can go wrong to cause a neuron to die. No longer a desperate dream, the path to a cure is becoming clear. Dr. Glass is working to turn off the genes that cause the disease. We're going to start a trial probably later this year where these things will be put into the spinal fluid of patients and hopefully they will target that abnormal gene and turn it off. Boom, it's like a switch that can turn it off. We're going to get a cure. Stopping a disease that has flourished for over a century is a massive undertaking. Now more than ever, philanthropic partnerships are the way forward. A movement is already underway. Patients, families, and the community helping to fund and find an answer to ALS. If we had more resources, we could do more, we could do it faster. You do that with people, and you do that with ideas, and you do that with space, and you do that with equipment. A game-changing resource would be a translational research center some place where we can take things out of the laboratory and very quickly getting them tested in humans. There is much work to be done. Advancements are made every day. And time is one thing we can't afford to waste. We need your help. We'll get your backpack, hon, and don't forget your lunchbox. You know, when you have a terminal disease, you know, your life just gets real simple. I love you. My first mission is to raise my son. And my second mission is just to help the community however I can. Somewhere down the road, I may find a cure. It may not help me, but I would like to think I have a part in getting some attention to the disease. For those living with a disease that takes everything, it's a constant struggle between a harsh reality and hope for a cure. Every day I get up, thank the Lord for another day. I got ALS. I'm still living, so it really does not have me.